Hey, I'm G, this is my art channel, and in this demonstration I'll be showing you how I used pigment markers by Winsor Newton to draw a full color autumn leaf. And the first thing that you can see me doing there is drawing out the leaf in very simple and very, very faint pencil lines on an A5 pigment marker paper. And I decided to use about seven or eight markers to complete this, and that's quite a few more than I would normally use and uh, I will either list them in the actual video or I'll list them below in the description so you should be able to see all the ones that I used and here you can see me doing a very small bit of experimental drawing first of all trying out the colors that I'm thinking of using in a very small section very small part of the leaf first of all just to make sure I've got all my colors right before I get really into the whole thing so with my color palette and kind of technique sorted out, here's where the real work began. And you can see me starting off with my lightest color, which is parchment pigment marker. And this is a very, very pale kind of brown, a nice, easy, light color to start with. So if I was making any kind of mistakes, they'd be fairly easy to kind of correct, wipe off and, and you know, not wreck everything too much. And I put this down and you'll notice as a base color covering this entire section of the leaf that I'm doing. So I've start with the parchment, then I was still sort of working out colors and I thought I might use lemon yellow light to do a little bit here, but it didn't really show up. Not like this marker did. This was the second marker I decided to use, yellow gold light. And it's got a really rich, much richer than say a, a normal yellow ochre type color. And I chose this because it was rich and really warm. And because it was an autumn leaf, I wanted to try and use as warm kind of a palette as I possibly could. So you can see me laying down a lot of that on top of the parchment. Then I start going in with my third color, which is burnt umber light. So you should be able to see I'm getting a little bit darker with my colors each time because this is a sort of medium kind of brown. And you can see me start to plot some of the darker shadowy areas um, that are on this section of the leaf using this burnt umber light. So I'm plonking this in, big thick strokes of the chisel nib, and then I go back in with the, um, the yellow gold light, and I'm just blending in some of those darker colors with the yellow. Then I go back in with parchment, and I start just using the parchment a little bit to blend some of those slightly harder, some of those slightly more contrasty edges. Now I've got a sort of nice base there from light to dark, and I start putting in this really lovely rich henna color. It's this really nice reddy kind of brown, and it's got a nice kind of dark feel to it, and you can really see me start to lay down some of those shadows now. And it might have looked a little bit too stark. So again, I can go back in here and blend along the edges of some of these darker colors, blend them into the lighter colors using those lighter colors themselves, you know, using either a bit of burnt umber light or perhaps some of the parchment. Here you can see me putting in my very darkest shadowy browns here. Van Dyke Brown was the darkest one that I had. And luckily it worked really, really well here. In fact, it worked really well as a first coat. And then if you needed, you could put in a second coat as well to make it doubly as dark. And because it's an autumn leaf, you saw me adding a bit of scarlet there because I wanted a little bit of that redness coming through that leaf after it's changed on the tree and it's sort of like fallen to the ground. So that's what I was doing with the scarlet. Not too much because I didn't want to overpower the thing, but I'm putting in little flashes of red. And then you could also see me blending in a little bit with the burnt umber light. So that was how I did that section of the leaf and that was working okay for me. So that's what, how I decided to approach this next section of the leaf. And I, what I was going to do was approach the entire leaf section after section after section. So where a piece was split between two veins of the leaf, that was what I was going to do a bit at a time. So a bit like how I'm doing flowers and I do a petal at a time. Well, with the leaf, what I decided to do was just do a section of the leaf at a time. So you've seen me lay down some parchment, then some um, yellow gold light. And also you could still see some flashes of green on this leaf. So I use sap green, which is a lovely, you know, natural kind of earth earthy green and I just put that in and there was little strips just across some parts of the, the leaf here that were still kind of green and then bordered with some nice yellow areas. So you can see me blending parchment again and yellow gold light in there and putting a big fat wadge of yellow gold light in there as well as the base for where I'm going to put some of my shadows because you can see that little pencil drawn bit at the top of this leaf here that's a bit that is folding over, curving over. So it's casting a bit of a shadow on that part of the leaf, which is why you'll see me add a lot more henna to this section and then also get the Van Dyke brown out and start going over some of that henna with Van Dyke brown. First of all, you can just see me there blending a little bit using the yellow gold light to just blend in some of those colors and make them a little bit, um, you know, less harder edged, less contrasty. And there you can see me whacking in that Van Dyke brown to really show that this, this part of the leaf is curving over and it's a bit shadowed. Getting some scarlet in there as well. So it's that autumn leaf feel of having a little bit of red within those browns as well. 
So with those first three sections of the leaf done, and the method and the colours all working well for me, all I had to do now is roll it out and do each part of the leaf section by section using pretty much the same technique and the same kind of colours. So that's what you can see me do from now on, rolling out the same thing to each section. And you might be looking at it and thinking, right, okay, he's working A5, so why is he not just using the really, really thin nib? Why is he using the chisel nib? Well, there are a couple of reasons for this. Um, I did do a, a video last year that you might have seen where I tried doing the blue iris flower, and I tried drawing that purely with the chisel nib, and it did not go to plan, and it was a bit of a disaster, a bit of a fail, and uh, I wanted to try and prove again that I could do a drawing using the chisel nibs and make it look good and make it look competent at least. Um, and also the other reason for using the chisel nibs is because when I'm using the fine nibs, I get a bit too noodly and a bit too fussy over all of the details. And I didn't want to do that with this. I wanted this to have a bit of a loose, expressive kind of feel. <laughs> so I thought if I use the chisel nibs instead of the fine nib, then hopefully that would mean that I couldn't possibly get too fussy with it. And it would have this kind of like kind of chunky chisel nibby kind of expressive kind of feel to it. And in this video, you can obviously see lots of close-ups so you can see how kind of rough and also quite expressive and chunky it looks. Uh, but I've since shared this image to social media, Instagram and so on. And people on there have been very, very kind and very, you know, lovely comments about how realistic it looks and how they thought it was uh, like a photograph which are lovely comments to get. And it's really, really great that people take the time to leave those comments. And it's just that when I was doing this, I thought, oh yeah, I really nailed this. It's going to be like super expressive. I'm doing it with the chisel nibs and it's going to be really kind of chunky and rough at the edges and, you know, just really expressive. And, and it looked like that as I was doing it. And then I guess when I finished it and I put on the shadows and everything, um, I don't know, maybe something had changed and it just ended up, when you see the whole thing from maybe a bit of a distance, looking really realistic. So at that point I was like, okay, in terms of expressiveness, perhaps back to the drawing board. Or maybe I just need to focus a big, big close-up on things next time so that you just see the really expressive kind of strokes up close and you never get to see the whole thing from a distance. But you no, know, I like seeing the whole picture, i got to be honest. So a couple of thoughts about the pigment markers and what I'm using and what I'm not using. Um, you might have noticed that I'm not using a white blender pen, the, the very famous and extremely cool white blender pen to blend any of the colors in this. Uh, and that's not because I don't like the white blender pen. I really, really do like it. But what I wanted with this autumn leaf was to make sure that it was proper colorful. Uh, the white blender pen blends colors together beautifully, but because it's a white blender pen, it has a sort of whitish residue and it can sometimes bleach out your colors a little bit. And I didn't want it to do that. So I thought what I would do is blend color with color uh, on this one, which is why I've got those lighter colors and I use those lighter colors to kind of blend in, if you will, some of the darker colors or blend some of the darker colors together as I go through this. So I'm using color to blend with color on this, which is a nice way of keeping the colors really, really bright and really, really vibrant. Another thing I'm doing here is using a much wider palette of colors. If you see most of my other videos, you know I usually try and limit myself to maybe two or three colors, like a light, medium, and dark. But with this one, I really couldn't. There were so many browns, there were greens that needed to be used, there were yellows, and of course the reds. I had to widen and, you know, you know, have a much uh, larger range of colors on this one. So that's why I've got a much bigger range of colors. And I've got to be honest, using all of those colors, seven or eight colors, I think, on this one, I think it's given the entire picture a much richer kind of feel and a lot more kind of diversity within the sort of little bits, you know, so perhaps a lot more to look at when you're looking at it. Uh, so that was another reason why I used a lot of colors on this. It was also a really fun challenge to try and use the chisel nib and try and manipulate that in order to get, you know, thicker and thinner kind of lines. And I actually found there was a lot more variety of different marks and lines I could get out the chisel nib than I thought there would be at first. And, and a lot of that experimentation was done actually while I was doing the drawing. I didn't do that many sort of preps for this like I normally would do. I kind of jumped straight in because I want it to be really fresh and like I said, expressive. <laughs> so, you know, I jumped right in with the chisel nibs and I kind of learned as I went along, you know, what I could do with them, how thick or how thin I could get the marks and, uh, you know, in order to do some of those really fine bits like the leaves and stuff, um, the, the veins on the leaf, you could see I really twisted and tilted that chisel nib onto the side and onto the edge to get some really, really fine kind of lines. 
Now, when I'd drawn out most of it, there were some areas that I needed to make stronger in terms of highlights and so on. And I tried doing that with the paler colors and that didn't really work. So what you can see me doing here is I go in with the colorless blender pen. And this is not the white blender, this is a colorless blender pen. So it's very much like a blender that you would get in an alcohol markers type set. Uh, and so what I did was I used this to try and pick out some highlights. And the blender pen works really well, I noticed, on top of colors. Uh, especially darker colors by sort of you know lifting up a bit of that color but giving it a kind of a fuzzy edge a little bit like when you rub out on top of charcoal when you've done a charcoal drawing and you try and lift up a highlight with a putty rubber or something it doesn't give you a really super stark kind of white highlight it gives you a kind of a fuzzy earthy rough edge kind of highlight and I noticed that the colorless blender allowed me to do that which was absolutely brilliant for this leaf with the kind of highlights that I wanted to add um, they were kind of softer, fuzzy, diffuse edge kind of highlights and that worked brilliantly and it actually made me think for a future video what I could do is a really, really completely dark flat background uh, with pigment markers and then try lifting out the picture by using the, uh, the color splendor to kind of reveal the highlights on a piece of work. Kind of like you can do if you make the whole piece of paper charcoal and then you try and draw the image using the rubber. So you're drawing in white rather than as you would normally draw with a graphite pencil in black. So I might do that for a future video. So with those highlights done, all I had to do was finish off a few very, very fine little detail bits using either the um, colorless blender or the edge of the Van Dyke Brown to just give some dark bits in there. Then it was the shadows. So I decided to use a gray for this. So I went with warm gray number five and I just decided that I was gonna pop in the shadows and then blend the edges of the shadows using the colorless blender pen so that the shadows had, instead of being a really stark kind of black or white kind of um, contrast they had a much softer kind of edge because the shadows that I saw on my desk when I was drawing this leaf for real they had this kind of softer edge so that's what I tried to use the um, the color splendor to do to just sort of soften and go around those edges and then go back in with the uh, warm gray number five and just add a little bit more intense shadow closer to the leaf as a technique, it worked pretty well. The only problem that I found was when I used the colorless blender to blend or try and soften the edge of these very, very strong shadows I was putting in, it did soften them up by kind of mixing with the color that's already on the paper and moving it around. But it also leaves a kind of a slightly grainy kind of finish along the edge. And you'll be able to see that as you see me use the, the uh, colorless blender here and try and blend those edges. I was hoping for a slightly more smoother, seamless kind of blend, uh, but that didn't seem to really occur. So you can see there's that kind of grainy finish where I've gone over uh, the dark color with the um, the colorless blender. And as I was saying, that was kind of a strength and, and it might prove to be uh, terrific for a, you know, a future piece of work. But in this case, I just wanted the kind of edges to, to kind of be a bit more diffuse and, and to get a little bit lighter um, you know, a little bit sooner, not not so kind of, I don't know, kind of grainy kind of finish. I didn't really want that. I wanted it to, to look a bit smoother, but it was the kind of technique that was going to work. So I rolled that out onto all of the shadows, starting on the left-hand side and then working my way around to the shadows underneath the stalk uh, and on the right-hand side of the leaf. I know I've done a couple of autumn leaves before in coffee and in, in watercolor, um, but you know I really enjoyed doing this one and I was really pleased with the end result. Um, let me know what you think about it and my thoughts on pigment markers. Leave a comment below. And because I drew this from life, not a photograph, um, there you can see the two side by side. I've got to admit the picture of the leaf on the left hand side, probably the colors are a bit distorted because it's under a daylight bulb uh, and under normal light, it looked a lot warmer than that. Please don't forget to uh, subscribe, like, and share. All of that helps really support the channel and the artwork that I can do on here. And if you haven't watched my previous pigment marker video, then I'll pop a link for that below.